Hello everyone, it's me Frog here and what you're looking at right now is the entirety of the Froggo Swing and Grapple spreadsheet and this is every sprite in the game in the single image in the single canvas why do I have this thing? so uh, to give a little bit of backstory uh, ever since I started using GIMP uh, this program right here uh, I have a habit of you know whenever I make a new game I would use a single canvas for all of the sprites in the game you know uh, people might usually just have separate files for separate sprites like this but I just have them in a single file and whenever I need to uh, turn them into their own individual sprite sheet, I will crop them and save as another file. And that's actually uh, how I usually go about making a graphics for my game. And as for Frog Swing and Grapple, they are for different sp sprite sheets because there's a lot of stuff and I have to split them. Uh, but basically, this is for uh, enemies and characters and objects. This is for terrain. This is for, uh, I guess, user interface and icons. And this is for word map. So, uh, I want to start with this one. Uh, because this is the one that I uh, use the most, I guess. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say, um, uh, explain a bit. This, uh, ever since it got created, and it was the same file. This one is also always the same file. This one is also always the same file. But this one, uh, at one point, this entire spreadsheet got wiped because I'm a little doofus and what I did is, uh, when I was saving a file, I accidentally control plus S uh, after the cropped uh, image. And then this basically overread the entire spreadsheet. And then I closed the program, so there's no way to like get back. So I actually went over every single sprite in the game, in the folder that I actually has saved. And piece them together to make to return this old spreadsheet. Uh, now it looks different, but uh, I'd imagine a lot of the cool history has been like destroyed uh, in the process. So that's a bit unfortunate. Another reason I want to do a video like this is that whenever I make sprites, I don't just make them. I make different options. I do them around. Uh, some of them don't get used in the game, but they were kept in the sprite sheet, so uh, it's interesting because I like to preserve this kind of stuff to look back on it later. <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, uh, let's start with the top left. I don't actually, actually, where do I start? <laughs> um, I guess let's start with Froggo, very good old little boy here. Um, so surprise surprise, uh, I actually separate the feet and his torso. And I said torso, but uh, he actually just has a head. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is his head because uh, he has, you know, his opening mouth state and his closed form at the and if I have to combine it with his feet movement, I will have to make a lot of individual sprites. So I decided to just separate them and layer them on top of each other. And it's also good for when you get like shoes. There's actually a lot of different shoes. Now, everything before, everything until the gold one right here is actually in the game uh, this one isn't I don't know why I drew this actually uh, this is the shoe sprites for the map and this is the shoe sprite 
uh, on its own and this is the sprite for when Fargo, Fargo gets damaged or electrocuted and you might be wondering why there's like white Fargo here um, this is for one of the mechanic in the secret version of a level when Fargo gets like invisible for a few seconds I had to use this sprite to indicate that he's actually invisible invisible um, oh yeah I feel like a lot of people wouldn't know wouldn't, wouldn't know about this or ever encounter it because I actually hide a lot of absurdly hidden absurdly hidden stuff in the game if you are like an achievement hunter you may notice it in the steam page and actually start to look for them but if you are a casual player uh, you probably wouldn't even notice it but yeah you would get a lot of stuff you didn't you would never seen in a game like this golden ant for an example and this uh, snake enemy for example and this oh oh god you probably don't even know any of this that I'm showing here <laughs> Yeah, and this is the end screen, and this, uh, oh, this, um, interesting thing here. Uh, so this is, uh, this is an enemy that never actually got coded into a game. I drew this, I drew the sprite sheets, but they never made it into the actual game, not even a prototype enemy. So what they will do is, uh, you know in the witch tower level you have these crystal things that give you weird gravity effects oh god there's also a lot of them that you don't actually see uh, what they do is that you see how these tomato things that have uh, different colors uh, yeah, it's actually the colors from the crystals and when the players swallow this enemy they will get the gravity effects so it's a weird thing that I actually come up with and was gonna be used in one of the secret version of the levels but I never actually got around to implement and this is the flower the huge humongous flower platform so um you know in the uh, scatter sky level there was like huge flower platforms this was the old version of the sprite and uh, if you don't know this is the new version and they got separated to fit in the sprite sheet oh and I guess I, so I should also explain the other things so um, this is this this and this were actually seen in game but the other ones are not really seen in game so the purple one I should start, it was used in an old version of the witch tower level and what it does is when player breaks it, it reverses time. So the reason it got scrapped is because it's really weird like having to deal with time stuff. Like I find it, I found it really hard to like deal with this kind of thing to design levels and programming wise is also kind of a mess. Uh, it had functionality, but it eventually got scrapped. This is kind of like when the other crystals uh, lose their powers and it becomes uh, a kind of weird state. It was uh, once used for uh, the witch boss. Uh, it was once used for the witch boss's attack, but uh, it also got scrapped. And this red crystal was used in the game. And this um this kind of emerald crystal, this green crystal, um it has a weird functionality basically when the player hits it it rotates or it makes the player rotate around the I guess it's weird to say rotate, it makes it orbit around the crystal. And the green one, uh, I forgot. Uh we also had this thing that had these crystal cubes that players can throw around. Uh, only two were actually used in the game. 
the other son really. Uh, the last one actually had a com actually has a functionality, and that is wherever the player throws it at, uh, the player would get teleported to wherever this cube lands. And it also got scrapped because I don't know how to use it in a level. And this, uh, you can probably guess, but these were levers. And whenever you flick the lever, this, uh, this little tile on lines will turn into tiles. It's kind of like the switches from Super Mario World, but uh, it also got scrapped. This is like the barriers for the enemies, but players can go through them. This is the key, and funny thing is, I actually made a keyhole tile, but it never got used. And this is the lantern, and this is actually a rotating tile, uh, used for one of the special rooms, but also got scrapped. This is the gear that got used in. Uh, one of the moving pa moving platforms in the first level. Uh, this is the enemy. Uh, there were actually a pink variant to this enemy, which I don't know if I actually removed it or it was it's still in the game. I think it's still in the game. God, I don't even remember. I haven't touched this game in a while. Uh, this is the poison. Uh, this is the breakable blocks. There were actually different breakable blocks at one point that you're supposed to break using different method but uh, I decided to change them all and uh, use a single type of them and this is the minecart uh, the funny thing is there used to be a minecart level but I scrapped it and one of the breakable tiles is uh, only was only breakable by running a minecart to it so that's cool and uh, this is the collectible health and the red one is actually uh, give you a boost of a boost of speed but like uh, I also scrapped it and this is the launch bubbles uh, wait actually I think I changed this but and this is the old version of the sprite I think Oh my god, this, this this freaking tile, oh my god. This thing dates back to the very beginning of this game's development. It was like in a prototype. So this is a tile that you can pull around using Frobo's tongue. But I scrapped it because it was too freaking buggy. Uh, and the physics in this game is already a huge buggy mess. So I d and I didn't really have a use for this, so uh, I think it just never got used. So you know these mushroom tiles that you can step on to activate these other mushroom tiles, and then I made a very Mario Maker ass contraption in the buggy woods level. <laughs> There's also these uh, sensor things that would place. There are essentially a background elements and they behave the same way as these kind of solid tiles but uh, the players the player can go through them and this uh, this is the flying platform that uh, it was in a very early version of the game I didn't use it this is the lily pad platforms oh my god it's, it's a dragonfly and the fly oh god I drew them very early on. Uh, uh, f the fly was never, the fly never got used, never even got coded into the game. Dragonfly was used as a test enemy. Dragonfly was actually the first ever enemy that got into the game, but it was only for testing purposes. And this, I feel like I gotta explain this. This is like the walking sprite of. Uh, I feel like I have to explain it with in construction with this. Um, I don't know why I worded it like that. Anyway, 
So this is supposed to be the the body of this thing. This flower. There were actually walking flowers that you can stand you can stand on and they they can walk around. They move around like a like an actual enemy, but you can stand on them and they work as a moving platform. And you want know, looking back, I don't know why I scrapped it. They would have been very funny to see them. I guess I could use it in Scatter Sky, but uh, I guess back then I didn't really figure out a way to use it in the level design. This is Fidget Spinner. I don't want to get any more context behind it. And this is the goal and the checkpoint. This game had a weird checkpoint system, I got to admit. And I'm the one who made it. <laughs> and the other thing are other thing on the screen are these meters. This is the one used when you wanna remove your shoes, and this is the boss HP. And this is the uh, amount of bullets Frogo has. Oh my god, I feel like I. Oh god, I have to give more context behind that sentence. So, um, one of the mechanics that you don't see in your regular playthrough is a kind of shiny grapes that Frago can uh, eat, and they, he can use it to like shoot at other enemies. It was a fun mechanic, and. It was kind of like, uh, uh, it was kind of like a Gatling gun. Cool stuff. And this is the collectibles here. This is the font. Surprise, surprise! It's not actually a font. Like it's not a proper .dot .ttf file. It's just a sprite sheet. And these are the numbers. Uh, you can see the original soundtrack that spelled together because uh, I had to use it for the thumbnail of the soundtrack. This is the uh, crosshair things and the UI thing, the HP, and this is the door. Oh, and uh, there was originally a locked door object, and that was you that was like two times larger than the original door. But I didn't use it. And this is the flower thing that didn't got used. It was used in a scrap level, but uh yeah, uh This is the slime. I don't know if I used this enemy. Actually I did in one of the secret version of the levels. This is the soul slime. I don't think uh this these two were like in together in the scrap level and they were never used again in the main game this is what is this even oh uh, I think I remember so originally I think I have to talk about this with the with this whole right sheet so you know how there's I draw like little thumbnails for these levels uh, originally I wanna let players to be able to collect them, and this is the sprite for it. Uh, never, that never became a thing because uh, I think I got really tired of working on this game, and I was just gonna. I just wanted to finish it, so a lot of weird features never got implemented. This is Lime King, Dual Lime King. Um. These are little cosmetics. I don't think uh, the first one you get from beating the main campaign, and the other ones you kind of just have to go through weird uh, hackery, weird absurd secrets. And here we have Umbrella Knight and her many sprites, her many frames. So this is her closing her umbrella, begin to fight, and this is her hiding in the background. So, it, 
For those of you who did not notice it, at the start of the battle she actually hides in the background and bef before the light struck, after that she shows up. Uh, some If you didn't like do carefully, you might think she kind of just appear out of nowhere from lightning. But she actually hide. I actually made her hide in the background before the battle starts. So this is her walking animation. This is her jump. This is her landing. This is her shielding. This is her upward strike. This is her guarding. Actually, this is her gut damage. This is her. This, uh, both of these are is her getting damage. This is her um laying on the ground this is her got electrocuted this is her main attack animation and this is the attack animation when she gets uh, charged by the lightning and uh, I, sh I guess I should talk about other bosses uh, this is Lily the witch uh, she had an order sprite this is the sprite sheet for her older boss fight but uh, I guess uh, I scrapped that one because it was boring, I thought, and I made a new one, so uh, she actually used to sit on her broom and use a magic wand, magic wand. Mm, and uh, I don't know if I had anything else to talk about. This is her intro animation in the new version of the boss fight, and uh, oh my god, what the hell is that? And um, this is the new version of the boss fight in her spy sheet. And um, this is her walking, this is her running, this is her running without the broom, this is her throwing the broom, and um, this is her uh, this is her entering trying to stand on the broom. And this is her on the broom, I think. This is her uh, going down. This is her guarding the attack. This is her using a crystal and and other mini stuff. Uh, this is her using her attack and using her attack in mid air. And uh, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Uh, oh, another thing I would like to know is. Uh, a lot of players probably feel like this boss fight is confusing to figure out. But what you, what you need to do is that uh, if you want her, you want to get her to throw her broom. You you want to keep a distance, like a long distance. Uh, like you wanna be at the other side of the room to get her to use her broom attack or stick onto the ceiling. Because she, otherwise she can she cannot use her short range attack on you, and uh, I guess you kind of have to I think hard to realize that it's not really that uh, all that intuitive. So I guess I could have done a better job designing this boss fight, but whatever. <laughs> uh, maybe next game. Um, uh, final boss fight spoilers, but uh, here's Grappler Knight. So I always thought it would be very cool to uh, face off a, to have the player face off against an opponent that have the same ability as you, but way more badass. So that's how I created Grappler Knight. So basically, he can also grapple, but he has a knife and which makes him a lot cooler. Uh, he's kind of like Umbrella Knight, but uh, he's a lot more quicker and a lot more difficult even. This is his walking animation, his jumping, his falling, uh, his getting hurt animation, his defeated animation. This is when he's doing the Beyblade spin. This is his ground attack, this is his air attack. This is when he's slicing the floor to make the players panic. Uh, I was really like this boss fight. I I feel like out of all the boss fights in the game, I feel like Lily is the worst one. 
Grapple Knight is the most fun one. Uh, Umbrella Knight is also cool for the amount of absurd crap I've hidden into the boss fight. But anyway, uh, so originally there wasn't gonna be two of the boss fights for Grapple Knight, but uh, originally the final boss fight was gonna be a huge dragon or a huge flying snake. And I guess the player has to fight mid air, but I guess I feel like I feel like that's too difficult and also I guess I was having technical limitation with drawing large sprites on screen. So and I didn't wanna code an entire Dragon Balls fight. So I guess I grabbed it and decided to split the Grappler Knight battles in two. There was actually gonna be two phases. Uh, once you defeated Grappler Knight uh, on the ground, he will slice the floor and begins phase two, and you start grappling. But I guess uh, I realized that grappling fight on its own would be too difficult. So uh, I split them into two boss fights. And the, gra the one that requires you to both grappling uh, would be the final boss fight. And yeah, I thought it was it was very sick to like uh, if you ever played up to until the final boss, you know how freaking badass it felt. But uh, I always thought when when that idea came to my head, I feel like oh my god, I have to make this a thing. <laughs> that it was so cool. You you and your opponents are just swinging on the ceiling, and there was no ground to land on. It's very difficult, uh, it might be very difficult for some people, but it was very cool, okay? <laughs> I also want to talk about more about the Dragon Ball fight, or I guess, uh, what later became Soul Snake. So, the Dragon Ball fight never became a thing, and later I made this Soul Snake thing, and uh, a lot of people never seen this, but it ended up becoming a secret boss fight. Uh, this boss fight was insanely hard if you fought it in like a uh, gusty forest because the wind keep the wind keeps blowing you back, and this thing keeps moving forward and blocking the entire terrain. So you don't want to be fighting this thing in gusty forest. But uh, originally, I want this to be a main campaign boss, and uh, back then I did I hadn't split the Grapple Knight boss fight, and Grapple Knight was the final boss, and I want something to be in between the Lily boss fight and the Grapple Knight, so this will be in between them. So I hadn't. So at first, this was gonna be its own boss fight level, but. Later, I decided that it would be cool if it like if it can be released into the entire world map and you can fight it in other levels and it ended up becoming a thing but originally it was gonna be like a lofty gate and a statue uh, looks like the small snake would become the whole the real thing and then it runs onto the world map and you gotta find it and get the key from the soul snack to unlock the gate to progress. I feel like this boss fight is too too hard for the players, so it ended up got scrapped and I made an easier version of the grabber knife fight. And that ended up becoming the boss the third boss fight for the game. Just taking a little break here. <laughs> anyway, what else do I have to talk about? And Lime King and uh, this is one of those inside jokes between my friends that uh, only us get. And uh, 
he made a cool drawing and said, please add this, and then tweeted to me on Twitter, and then I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> and then I seriously added it. <laughs> he did not expect me to add this, but I did. This is, uh, this sprite sheet, I believe, was for uh, all of the casting sprites. It was used for the actor object using the costumes. And this was actually, you know, when uh, you defeated Lily and Zhou Tao got sucked into the air and broke uh, Lily's walls. And this isn't actually a background. This is like an object. <laughs> oh, and there's this little mushroom thingies. Uh, I drew them. I actually wanted them to be kind of a hidden collectible, similar to One Ups, but just for the sake of collecting them instead of contributing to your life count uh, it got scrapped because I didn't have time to make them hide or hide them in the levels and this is all the decorating objects decorating tiles in the game they are formatted in a weird way because of how I made the game and how weird the system of the game I made them to be these are all the paintings um, this is from Exponent. Uh, obviously, this is the Soul Snake. Uh, this is the Ladybug from on the level of thumbnails. And this is actually part one battlefield. Like no joke, I flipped the image besides it and put stuff on it. <laughs> A lot of people don't notice it, but uh, I guess I'm here just um, actually explaining the joke. And this is the real screen display thingy you found in the final level. Uh, not a particular reference to anything. Uh, just showing that Wakon Knight for some reason wants Jotao and they came to Earth. Uh, I don't want to explain this. This is the decorating tiles. Uh, they are special to other terrain tiles because they have a different kind of look. But uh, I will explain more later. Mm, what else can I explain? Um, this is the beetle enemy. And it has a flying variant that is very annoying. Uh, it was kind of jank to defeat it. Oh, and this is the scrap thing. So, uh, you know, I made various different map encounters for this game some of them get used uh, there aren't really encounters they're just uh, they appear on the screen when you activate the secret version of the levels and two of these didn't get used uh, originally I want to have like Lily roam around on the map and this thing uh, I call this thing Flishy Flishy and uh, it kind of looks like a lucky two, and player can grab onto it. Uh, it didn't become a thing. It was gonna be like uh, appear in the level two beat, but uh, I didn't let it become a thing because I don't know what to use it for. <laughs> it was kind of just uh, it was a cool thing, so I added it. But uh, I don't know if it contributes to the game. But anyway, um, here's uh, a lot of stuff from Scatter Sky, and this is the shield bug. Lots of people didn't encounter it because it was one in one of the secret rooms. And this is a seed, and if you plant it on the ground, it will grow into a vine that player can climb. I guess uh, it didn't got used. And this is a cool thing because it's like a helicopter, a propeller flower player can hold on to, but uh, it was in an old version of the game, but it was in an old version of the level, but uh, I did not uh, I made a new version of that level, and this one didn't get used this one is like the grappling point, the flower grappling points, but uh, instead of being stationary it blinks you into the air after you hold on to it and this is not uh, you can pull it and it will launch into the air 
also didn't get used because of how jank to use it. And this is the uh, steampunk skyline thing. Uh, this level used to be called steamy cliffs. Like not even steaming cliffs, steamy cliffs. <laughs> yeah, it was very uh, bad at naming stuff. Oh, and this was gonna be like a decoration thing. I actually want this to be only. I actually want this level to be kind of like a production line for these robots. Uh, Steamio. Uh, this is his name. But uh, I didn't have the time to make that thing. This is a stonio. Uh, he cannot be eaten. He can only be grappled onto. But he got scrapped. Uh, both of these were actually made for the same level. Um, Steampunk Skyline used to be like just a cliffs level, but I thought that the world was too bland, and I decided to give it a steampunk thing and make an entirely new one. This is the final level, and this is the battery, this is the trajectory, and the weird uh, robots enemy stuff, and this is the grappling extender. This is the platform used for the Grappler Knight boss fight. And uh, this is the anchor at the beginning of the level. So, you know how the final level is in the sky? I didn't want to just make the player show up in the level because it would be weird. So I thought it would be cool to make it like an airship thing from Mario 3. Like, Mario has to hold on to the anchor to go up the airship. So this become a became a thing and player just go zoom through the air and end up in the level. It was a very cool entrance, I love that. And this is the shop. Oh oh my god. <laughs> you didn't see this, but I actually gave the shopkeep like huge thick legs. I thought it would be funny to give them legs and players just never see them because only the the head was visible it was so funny i believe uh everything here was uh explained and uh what else should i talk about i don't think anything else is there uh anyway um this is the whole thing Oh my god, there would used to be like a huge sprite for the Lily boss fight. Lily used to I plan to have I plan to give her like a second phase where she becomes huge and she will start to attack you from the background, but uh I think the sprite got lost. Uh I but I feel like at that point I already gave up on the on that concept but anyway just an interesting thing to talk about I feel like we should move on to other sprite sheets so this is the terrain sprite sheet you can see that they are split into 8x8 tiles and this is how I form, format them they were, uh, I would like crop them individually like this and that's how it works. And uh, in a level editor, editor the, play, the program will check for neighboring tiles for individual tiles and change the data. And in the game, they will appear differently. Piece, it will piece the tile together depending on the neighboring tile. And that's why they are scattered around like this. Um, I made them like a cross and then I just split them and put them in a straight line. Uh, anyway, uh, clear sold out of them. Uh, I guess you can kind of look through them if you want. Uh, the different thing about the decoration tiles is that it doesn't go through that process of uh, uh, making, piecing together a tile set 
but this one uh, as for the usual one they do and this is the tile for the vine anyway nothing much to talk about there are stuff that uh, you probably never seen and aren't actually used in game this is the old water tile there used to be I actually added swimming but it never got added so this water tile became obsolete anyway you may also notice that a lot of tile set had like two versions uh, the one at the bottom are the new version this game actually used to have a different look but I decided that I want to give it an NSS color palette and give it an overhaul so uh, it would look more interesting I guess because I was uh, like terrible at choosing colors so I just like ugh, why not just use a pre-made one <laughs> anyway uh, oh I have an interesting thing to talk about this um, this is an old boss fight this is actually the first boss fight of the game uh, it's the snake boss fight it's actually kind of like the video game snake uh, the boss will move around in a tile grid and I guess this is just the its body and it will form automatically every every time it moves and the other part of the boss fight is here there were version you will have to fight and there were version that works as a moving platform and these back tiles are the one that controls the moving platform's direction and speed so a uh, little interesting thing that I can talk about and, uh, yeah nothing else here I believe this is the path for the world map and here we have the UI so this game us used to have like just a level select screen and not not a word map and this is the sprite used for when the level isn't unlocked and this is for unlocking the levels but later I decided a, mo a word map would be cooler so there's that oh this is the programming mode thing that I uh, wanted to add uh, not long after that, I realized it was a stupid idea, so uh, it didn't stay in the game for too long. So this is all the thumbnail for the game. And uh, I made an overhaul version for each and every one of them, uh, except for the Umbrella Knight, I guess, because it was already perfect. Actually, not really, because by the time I added Umbrella Knight, uh, I already did the book graphics overhaul and there didn't exist a boss fight at the start of the game so uh, I decided that I want to add uh, an easy boss fight I guess and that's how Umbrella and I came to be so yeah just going through them there actually is an even older version of the Cliff level and this is this it's just geyser in the flagground this looks so ugly god damn it uh, this looks slightly better and eventually it turns into this I try to make them look very pretty this turned into this oh and this is the snake boss that I just mentioned this used to be the one and only and the final boss fight of the game but it was freaking boring I guess so I didn't keep it in the game and this is the final level the mag magnetic excavator and this is the final boss fight I always thought it looks cool and this is the uh, when I was drawing the thumbnails I had to like do all around in, in the side in the empty space I always feel like it was cool to be able to do all around in the empty space and then move them into the frame when they're done. So that's why I employed this huge canvas method for making sprites. As you can see this is Stimio and I need to put it here. And this is the conveyor belt and which ended up here. There's also this struggle stepping on the platform. 
and uh, this is the title screen, the old one, I believe. And oh god, uh, the final boss thumbnail used to you know look kind of like this, but uh, I thought it looked bad, so I made this. It looks a lot more badass, you know. There is gonna be cutscenes, and they look fucking. They look so bad. Oh my god. Some people may remember this in the beta version, but uh, they were deleted. And uh, nothing else to say. Uh, this is used to be the final level. It got scrapped. Once again, got scrapped. This is the new title screen that got used in the small uh, image uh, on Steam. This is the Chinese title screen for the old version. Uh, I didn't make a new version for uh, the title screen. I didn't make a new title screen for the new version because it's a lot of work and I don't think it looks great. And uh, this used to be a thing. And it looks good as well, but uh, I decided to not use it because I will have to draw a lot more stuff and it's tedious. High definition Fraggle and high definition Jotao. <laughs> this is all the achievements in the game. Very cool. Uh, have a blast making them. Uh, there was gonna be an achievement menu, but uh, I was lazy because programming it UI and making UI uh, was boring, so I didn't make them. <laughs> and there's also other stuff here. This is the file menu, and this is all the thumbnail compiled, compiled together. Uh, uh, I think I actually explained this, but I was gonna have like collectible thumbnails that you can check out later. But uh, I decided I didn't have no time. So, and this is the dialog box, and this is the tutorial box, and this is the one on the left of the world map. And now we move on to the world map. So, uh. Since the world map is huge, it also got another whole spy sheet. So here we have, starting from here, this is the start of the game. The Vine Valley, which isn't even a valley, it's just it's plains. But I gotta make the first elf, the first letter match. This is the boat. This is the buggy woods and the gusty forest. And this is the tower. Steampunk skyline. So this guy, uh, I saw a streamer say that they were disappointed that this isn't this devil isn't called bubbly clouds. And now that now that you said it, I also feel like this is a huge mis opportunity. But then again, I'm terrible at naming things. This is the boss fight. This is Scatter's Guide, which is just a lot of sky islands, and this is uh, the magnetic es excavator. <laughs> The, es the Magnetic Excavator It's a real name but I, I, I kinda wanted to make it feel like it's a very weird and alien place and you don't know what its actual purpose is so that's where it got its name from and this is the the part of the Magnetic Excavator um, this is the item, and this is all the various icons. And um, this is what the icons could have been, but it looks goddamn ugly and boring. And uh, yeah, there's other spikes. Oh, there's also slimes. Interesting. Why did I end up with this? And yeah, and the various stage encounters. And yeah, and this is the secret world. Anyway, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Oh my god, this is a long video. God.
Man. Oh god, this is the first concept art of Umbrella Knight. Damn. Anyway, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I think that's it. Uh, I would really like to see, uh, get the old version of this spreadsheet, but it's just lost, unfortunately. Uh, there would have been very, a lot of cool stuff in the spreadsheet, but uh, I guess it is what it is. But anyway, uh, it was very fun making this video. Uh, I, I feel like in the future I want to make more of this kind of spreadsheet tour kind of video because it would be cool like uh, just showing cool stuff that didn't show up in the game while also talking about the history of the development it's kind of like Minecraft World Tour <laughs> but uh, it's for spreadsheet and game development but anyway this game I ended up with for what being spreadsheet and uh, I would do this kind of video for Aquatic Ascent and I'm actually uh, I was editing the spreadsheet for this game and I saw I thought about the idea for this cool video and I decided to make it for Flavosu and Gravel uh, when, I, when, I'm done, when I'm done with Aquatic Ascent I will make a spreadsheet tour for this game as well but uh, for now uh, I think it's time to wrap up uh, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, shoutouts to the few people who actually made it to the end Rumbles. Um, uh, I don't know how to end video, so uh, I guess bye.